Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll. Honored to be with you guys on the Plugin Alliance channel. And when you see this face on the Plugin Alliance channel, you probably think, wait a minute, does that mean we are getting ready to get a new channel strip in the Mega Bundle? Yes, that's exactly what it means. So let's take a look at the screen here. Uh, the AMEC 200 right here. If you have the Mega Bundle, you know that we have the 200 EQ and the 250 EQ in the AMEC product line. And we also have the Master and Compressor. So this is like putting that EQ and that compressor into one channel strip. So we have it side by side with things like the AMEC 99, which was in our product line for the last year or two. Anybody that knows this product or ever had a chance to use the real hardware um, is, is a lucky person. I got to mix a lot on and record a lot on one of these consoles in my early days, and it's just a just a monster. Um, it's just an amazing piece of of hardware, and so I'm really glad that we have that in our software world. So these are the two offerings of the channel strips that we have in the AMEC portion of the Plugin Alliance Mega Bundle, and as you can see, they're laid out very similar. So we have our high pass filters in the upper left hand corner and our low pass filters as well. And we can change where, they, where they're positioned as far as the input being first or post being later, or we can put them in the side chain on both of them you'll see right here. And we have our dynamic section right under that right here. We have our compressor in the middle and over here on the far bottom left, we have our gate and our expander. And you'll see it's laid out the same way in both of them. And one thing I'll tell you about the gate expander is that if you've ever used either of the pieces of hardware that these are based on, that part uh, didn't even actually exist. But to have a good functioning channel strip, that's something that we want, right? To get a little snare drum out of the kick drum, to get a little kick drum uh, or hi-hat out of the snare, that kind of a thing. So this is a unique tool that they designed for the 9099 to make it an all-around channel strip. So if you know this from using the 9099, I got good news for you. You also know it in the 200 because it is exactly the same, which is, is great. I actually like some, some of that continue, continued thought process across product lines so I don't have to learn everything um, from new. When we get to the compression section, you'll see they're different. The compressor on the 9099 is more standard what we would expect out of a compressor. We see our attack, we see our release, we see our threshold, our ratio, we have an auto makeup gain option, we can go from hard knee to soft knee. All these are terms that we know and we understand as engineers. But when we look at the 200 here, we see it's different. We, we do not see an attack and release, we see a timing. So that's adjusting attack and release in one knob. And we don't see the traditional metering here, we don't see a switch between soft knee and hard knee because we have a separate soft knee setting right here. You see that little green light in the word soft. And then we also get up into here into the normal ratio of values that we expect. And that is, everything above that is hard knee, okay? And one thing, the makeup gain here, I need to tell you, is that very much like an SSL operates, as you compress in hard knee, everything... Uh, it has an auto makeup gain, so it gets louder. So you may find yourself having to trim when you're in hard knee settings. Whoops, wrong knob. When you're in hard knee settings up here. When you're in soft knee, though, it's more like a traditional makeup gain, whereas everything gets quieter as it's getting compressed, so you're going to have to bring it up, okay? They're very different circuits in the compression. But if you know the mastering compressor in the AMEC bundle, plug-in alliance bundle then you also know you're, you're starting from a good ground here in the 9099 the eq section is very similar to what we would expect out of other console channel strips we have our top shelf our bottom shelf and we have two sweepable mids and it's kind of a broad stroke tool honestly so you go over here to the wide q and it's uh, 0.065 and when you go to the sharp it's at only two which is not really all that tight so it's kind of a broad stroke piece however we do have this notch filter button right here that we can engage, which turns it into a completely different animal. And we have the times two button, you know, so we can change the frequency selections. If we can't get as high or as low as we want to, we can just change that. When we get to the EQ section of the 200, it's a different animal. And if you have the AMEC 200, you, you already know this piece. But if you don't, 
you'll notice a couple things right out of the gate that are a little different. We have, first of all, five bands instead of the traditional four. We also, on the top, the two bands can be shelving or bell peak filters. The bottom can be shelving or bells, which is cool. So we have two bands that can do that type of a thing. The cues are m capable of getting much more extreme than what the 9099 is. We can go as broad stroke as 0.4 or as narrow as, as 4, which is twice as tight as what the 99 would go. Although it's not tight as tight as the notch filter on the 9099. So it's just different flavors of kind of doing the same kind of thing, but in different ways and different thinking. But one really cool thing about the 200, which I love, is see this button right here, auto listen. So if we find an obnoxious frequency in our acoustic guitar or our piano or whatever that we're trying to scoop, um, instead of just guessing and hearing the results, if, if you really want to know exactly what that obnoxious frequency is, you can sweep here with the auto listen engage. And as you click on the frequency, it solos up that. And the Q value that we have going is represented within our sweeping. So we know exactly what we're getting ready to boost or what we are getting ready to cut. I love that feature about the 200, one of my favorites. And right here, the gain scale, we're gonna, we're gonna get into that, but it is cool. So you'll see if I go to 3 dB here and 3 dB here, if I increase, it's actually doubling. See that? And if I decrease, it's just the opposite. It's going back to, to zero. So it, if I feel like I've over-EQ'd a piano, right, I can just go this way just a little bit to hear all, all my frequency selections and my Q values are remaining in place, but I can go a little less extreme. Or if I'm like, man, that snare drum just isn't, it's still not quite punching me enough. I can try just moving that gain gain scale up a little bit and all my values and all my selections are intact, but I'm just getting more of it. So that, that's a really cool feature that I found myself using this morning as I was dialing in a mix. All right, let's get right at it. So let's get these out of the way because these were just there for demo purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a little bit of a raw track, no processing whatsoever, that I recently recorded of a young uh, kind of Americana group here and in town and i thought it would be a great choice because it's very organic we have real gu acoustic guitars electric guitars real drums when i think of channel strips you know the fact that they have compression and limiting and and eq all built in organic real instruments are one of the first things that come to my mom to my mind all right so let's check it out Great, great sounding song, great sounding tracks, but it needs our typical mix processing. Uh, there's some things that need to be brighter. There's some things that need to be less tubby. There's things that need to be dynamically controlled. So let's just start this party with the Amec 200. So what we'll do is let's go to the kick drum and check it out, right? So let's look at what I was doing here. We had our EQ in doing the thing that we always do. Boost a little bottom end, we cut away some of the low mids, add a little attack, maybe a little air up there, it looks like. A little bit of filtering, a little bit of gate, a little bit of compression, you know, just all the channel strip stuff. I'm really, I'm really using its full feature set on this kick drum. So let's let's uh push play here. We'll hear the raw kick drum as recorded, and then I'll engage the channel strip and you'll hear the difference. Okay, a couple things I want to get to about that. In addition to the EQ being normal, let's call it, of what we would do, did you hear how effective that gate was? That gate is really, really good. So uh, again, like I, I mentioned, the 9099 and the 200 channel strip both have the same gate. So if you know one, you know the other. But you see a lot of options right here. Don't get scared by that. I know sometimes guys don't, oh, just, I just need just a few buttons. But this thing is very customizable. We can get in here and I'm, I'm just going to kind of show you what I was doing with the gate here. We have this listen section. We can dial in exactly what the gate is listening for. And this is what I chose.
just a little bit of tack of the kick drum there. You'll see I've got the, the high pass filter set to around 900 cycles, it looks like, and I'm using the high Q, which puts, see that right there on the, on the screen? Puts a bump, uh, a little, little resonant, resonant bell. So you go right below the snare drum, and we, we are left with the attack of the kick drum, right? And the same thing on the bottom end. Uh, I just really need when we can hear the attack of the kick drum. So here is without the gate. A fair amount of bleed, uh, especially by the time we boost our upper mids on the kick drum. Now with the gate. The snare is all but gone. So that is a very effective tool. And I'll tell you, it's just as effective as of removing hi-hat from snare drums as it is uh, removing snare drums from kick drums. So it's a great tool to have in your channel strip on the 200 and the 9099. Okay, another really cool thing. I, I'm just going to go ahead and show you this gain scale in action. So you'll see the amounts that I chose. What if I thought, man, I, I got the mix going and the kick drum is not popping. Okay, so I've already identified where my attack is, and I've got that locked in. I've identified where the ugly lower mids are. I've got that cut. I've identified where the meat of the punch of the kick drum is, and I've, I have that boosted. Oh, that's great, but I just need more of it because it needs to pop and kick, literally kick, uh, the mix a little harder. Check this out. It just gives me more. See, it keeps all of my moves intact, but gives me more of it. So that, that the cut is getting cut more, the boosts are getting boosted more. And if we go this way, of course, it's just the opposite. If I thought, ah, man, I've overpressed that get, you know, over processed that guitar a little bit. I've over processed that snare drum a little bit. I can take that gain scale and just cut it back a little bit. So it's just, I, I love that feature. I hope they, uh, in, future revisions, uh, put that in more plugins because that that is a monster. Okay, let's just move on to something else. Let's move on to the snare drum because that's uh, just a fan favorite, the snare drums. And let's just listen to a little before and after. So the snare drum is spanking a little harder. Uh, you'll see on the EQ, I didn't really do a lot. Uh, the snare drum sounded great as it is. So I just added a little bit of low end body, cut out a little boxiness, a little attack, and a little of that, um, the kind of thump that from the stick hitting the head, that kind of a thing. A little bit of compressor and quite a bit of the gate. You'll hear that the ride cymbal and the hi-hat stuff is really effectively being uh, reduced. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go as extreme as I did on the kick drum. Uh, I just want to turn it down, you know, 8, 10, 12 dB, somewhere around there generally, depending on how bad the bleed is. But let's talk about the compressor, okay? Let's do that. So here's the snare drum with no compression. With. Okay, so it's spanking a little harder. And let's let's talk about this ambience button right here. It's almost like ear training in, in a sense, but also we can use it to fine tune exactly what we're getting because our timing, let's face it, it, it doesn't have attack and release. It's kind of built into one. So if we want to know exactly what we're grabbing, we turn that on and let's just turn the threshold up and it'll tell us. So that, again, remember, that's the difference between the output and the, uh, the input of the compressor and the output. So what we're hearing is only what the compressor is grabbing. So if we wanted more of the drum, we would do this. So it's not attacking the attack. It's grabbing the body. That's not what we want. We want to speed this up and we want to grab the attack and let go so the sustain and body of the snare drum is still there. So let's speed this up. probably somewhere in there. Let's check this out. All right, and that's at a four to one ratio, as you can see. So that's really cool. So let's do um, the limiter section now. And a good place to hear that in action, I think, 
would be the overheads. Because most of us, that's what we're trying to do with our compression on the overheads. We're trying to ch just kind of take the, the loudest elements, with a, which a lot of time is the snare drum, and tuck it down in there a little bit so the body of the kit, that you know, that, 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 that just that gel that the overheads give us, gives us comes up a little bit to support the close mics. So let's check this out, what I was doing. EQ wise, you'll see I'm taking out just a tiny bit of 500 and I'm adding just a little bit of three, about three dB of top end, just so you could really, not because it needed it, just so you could hear the circuit. I wanted you to hear, hear, hear the high frequency of it. And we're high pass filtering a little bit. But other than that, it's just about the compressor. So I want you to hear this limiter circuit. So I'm going to put this ambient circuit on until I hear that snare drum on the back beats, because that's what, again, that's what the limiter is going to be attacking. I'm going to go too heavy handed just so you can hear it. Now let's hear it on the actual track on input and it's, you're probably going to hear the snare drum being really pushed back. Yeah, a snare drum sounds like it's 10 feet further away from you than the cymbals are. <laughs> uh, but you know, we don't want it quite that drastic. So let's check it out one more time. Let's just tickle it just like that. All right, very cool. And you'll see on the the uh, mono maker, I was actually removing just a little bit of the bottom end from the stereo image as well. So that's that. One more thing that I think would be fun to talk about is drum rooms. And you'll see. Let's let's just turn them up a little bit, and we can hear what what I did. Okay, I hear right away the problem that a lot of drum rooms have, and that is that the kick is leaning to one side and the snare is leaning to another. A little bit of that is okay. That actually kind of helps our cause sometimes, but too much of it is not good because our foundation, we kind of lose our foundation. So one really cool feature on all the Plugin Alliance channel strips, or many of them at least, is the mono maker feature. And you'll see right here, check it out. And I'm just going to turn it on and then I'll play it and I'll turn the mono maker up until we get the imaging on the low frequency kind of tightens up in the in the middle. That's a massive difference. Check it out before and after. So we still have our exciting stereo spread, our cymbals, our hi-hats, our tom-toms, the attack of all the drums as they're being hit are still going to be in stereo and it's going to be exciting, but our foundation remains nice and tight. And another thing that the a lot of the channel strips have built into them, especially these two AMEC, is the stereo width knob. I know some people are scared of stereo width knobs. I am not. I actually like them. If it's, you know, louder... Uh, it's better in most clients' minds, right? Well, if it's wider, it's better in most clients' minds. I'm not going to use it to extremes, but it, you better believe it. 100, 120, 130, I'm going to use that because it's it's going to sound better to my clients, and I'm going to get more mix work out of it. So let's check it out before and after. <laughs> So all of a sudden the air is outside of the speakers just a little bit because the rest of my drum kit is on the inside of the speakers. So it's just the ambience of the drum kit seems a little wider and more extreme, but we're not messing with the foundation of our drums in the middle. So I just, I really love that feature. Let's talk about one more thing. Let's talk about acoustic guitar because acoustic guitar is one of those instruments that we have in most many genres that are, we're going to face it. And it's generally a combination of compression and EQ because it's percussive as well as it is chordal. All right, so let's just check it out as recorded. Uh, this was a doubled uh, track, meaning he played the same part twice. So I'm going to pan it to the middle instead of hard panned. It'd be easier for us to focus on that way. And I'm going to keep it in bypass. We'll hear the guitar as recorded. <laughs> I 
exactly what I expected and what you expected. It's a little thick, so we need some um, reduction of the lower mids as well as we need a little sparkle on the top end and the dynamics. We need just a little more control on it. So by gosh, let's do that. So you can see what I did. I added a little sparkle. I added a little 4K, kind of the jangly thing to make it pop out of the mix a little bit in the mids. And I reduced a little bit of that boxiness around 240. And so this is going to be a really cool spot for me to show you the auto listen function. So we click this little button right here at the bottom. And now when I select my frequency, let's turn this frequency up. And when I sweep, you're going to hear a combination of these knobs in action so we can find the frequency and the cue that we really are wanting. Okay, I've got the boost a little too much. Here we go. But that's where it's at, right there, 240 cycles. So let's reduce some of that. Yeah. Now let's let's get our compressor going and just uh, try to um, rein it in dynamically just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to undo what I had, and we're going to start from scratch. So let's turn on the ambience feature, because I, I just think that's really fun to hear what it is I'm trying to attack. You don't want it to cut off too quick. Uh, unlike a snare drum, it's a, there's some sustaining that's going all the way through, so we don't want our release to be like massive fast. Let's, let's try that in the mix. There, before and after. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up even. Now let's take and copy that to both channels and we'll hear it in stereo with and without the processing. Definitely more energetic and that little bit of pump that I hear in the compressor, once I pull, put all the tracks in, we're never gonna hear it, we're never gonna hear it. All right, so that said, last, let's just do this. Let's compare, I tried as I was dialing in sounds on this to take all of those settings and copying, copy them down to the 9099 so we could kind of hear if everything is set to the same and um, all things are equal, just how different are the circuits. So let's do this. Start with the 200 and then I'm gonna bypass it, unby unbypass the 9099 and we'll kind of hear the differences and then talk about it. All right, what I'm hearing is that the 9099 is a little more subdued sounding, um, it, it, but a, a little bit more mid forward, I feel. I feel like the mids are just a little more uh, jump, jumping out compared to the other frequencies, just a tiny bit. Very elegant sounding, whereas the 200 um, has a little more air and shine up on the top end. And I can feel that those, the compressors of the 200 are definitely more grabby. It's doing, it's doing more of a compacting uh, of the dynamic range than the 9099 does. Um, but both of them sound awesome and have a place in, in, in my workflows, that's for sure. And now, uh, thankfully, both of them will have a place in your workflows because this is now part of the Mega Bundle. So if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're a Plugin Alliance fan and also own the Mega Bundle. So you guys go up there to the, the Plugin Alliance installer 
download this thing, have it on your computers and start having a good time. There's tons of presets. Look at this, 72 of them in there. So you can get working right away as you're learning how to handle and navigate that uh, unique compressor. And uh, other than that, man, enjoy. All right, happy mixing. Thank you.